Erica. What is up guys? Oh, welcome back to my channel. It's the beginning of 2024 and I figured I would show you a little haul. In fact, it's not one haul, it's two hauls as I have been buying since the new year has began. I figured how fun would it be to show you all the newness that I have in my collection. Oh my gosh, if you can hear that in the background, the one time I film, the neighbor wants to use a jackhammer. Great start to 2024. You've got nothing! Alright, so I'm going to show you all the newness that I have in my collection from Ulta and Sephora over the last couple weeks. And before I go there though, you know what I'm going to say. Subscribe. I would super appreciate it. A lot of you aren't and you're watching this video. Hit the notification bell so you can be reminded the next time I upload a new video. And hit the like button please if you like this video. Okay, I'm going to shut up now and let's get into the stuff that you actually want to see. Let's go. Cheers. Where? Do I begin? Why I'm saying what what way? Well, let's start with what I'm wearing. Okay, so here's a couple things that I'm actually wearing on my face now that I have bought recently because I just want to try them all out. As you know, I have been on an Estee Lauder kick. If you watch my channel, you know I've just been like obsessed with the Estee Lauder and I haven't tried out their Futurist Skin Tint Serum. I have literally all their other Futurist products and some of them I really am obsessed with. Um, but this one I haven't tried. This is the Futurist Skin Tint Serum, which is like, how can you not like a serum? It has an SPF 20. It is a broad spectrum and it has botanical oil infusion. I wouldn't get this twisted. This definitely says skin tint, but it is very full coverage. I am actually wearing this on my skin right now. It does give you a little bit of poke through. I don't have perfect skin, so you can see that I don't have perfect skin, which is good, but it also sort of evened out everything and made it look really nice. It does not emphasize any of my dry patches, and it isn't very full coverage, but it's not light coverage either. So far, I really, really like this. I don't love the little dropper that it comes with, but otherwise, so far I'm really liking it. I haven't used it for very long, so I will maybe put this in an updates video and let you guys know, but so far, it's looking really good. Also, then I'm wearing this uh, lip trio thing that I have going on here. Now, you guys are gonna come for me. Not me, not Hermione, you. This is Kylie's Precision Pout Lip Liner. So, Kylie Cosmetics has the little lip kit. Everyone likes the liners, blah, blah, blah. I saw Katie Heron wearing army pants and flip flops, so I bought army pants and flip flops. I don't. I actually really don't like the creamy lip liner deal. I don't love a super, super creamy lip liner because I like my pencil to be very precise. Um, so when they came out with these, I thought, let's just give it a go. And they were all in very nice neutral nudist shades. So that's kind of my jam. Got the shade Smitten, which is a little bit darker than my normal shade. So far, I really like this because it is like a wooden pencil. So it comes across the skin super, super precise. And I'm able to kind of get the cupid's bow and line it everywhere I want it to go. And then it stays put because it's not so creamy. So, so far, I'm actually really liking this. Can you get this somewhere else? Probably. Probably. Vicky, can I help you with that Kool-Aid? Please? But, so far I'm really enjoying this lip liner and right now I'm like uh, weirdly obsessed with all lip liners, so I'm really enjoying this. What I'm enjoying even more is NARS new Afterglow Sensual Shine Lipstick. It goes on so shiny, as you can see, and I have the shade Dolce Vita. I picked Dolce Vita because if you watch my channel, you know I love the Dolce Vita Afterglow Blush, which is like that liquid blush, and I have it on today, and I love it so, so much. This is, ugh. This is the lipstick I've been waiting for. I'm not a huge, huge fan of lipsticks. This is something I can get on board with. It's smooth, it's creamy, comes out very small. It's not like a huge, chubby lipstick. And it just goes on with ease, effortless, so beautiful, shiny, satiny, ugh, oh, love it. Thin, doesn't feel like you're wearing a lot on your lipstick, and very hydrating. So far, this is my favorite lip product of 2024. Then, on top of that, I have the Buxom Plump Shot. This is Collagen Peptides Advanced Plumping Lip Serum. I have tried this out before in other videos, but they came out with a whole bunch of new shades, which are multi-chrome tints. I happen to have this shade Spellbound Pink, and even just in this light, you can kind of see that like multi-chrome effect. So I was really thinking this is gonna give me like some super dimensional shine, and it is pretty. And it does do a little bit of plumping. I wouldn't say it like obviously makes my lips enormous. Mainly this plump shot, which I love this product already, 
kind of just enhances the outline of your lip and plumps the outside edges of it, which is really kind of what I'm looking for anyway. It doesn't burn like the Dickens and hurt you. It's just a really good, solid, plumping lip serum. But now you can get this sort of like shiny, multi chrome looking thing and I love it so far. So this is kind of like the lip trio combo I have been wearing the junk out of lately and I actually can't get enough of it. I love it so, so much. And I keep all three of them in my bag, so obsessed. Also on my eyes right now, actually it's a combo of two things. So I'm gonna show you both of them because they're both new. And delve back into another Morphe palette. This is more Morphe's Aura Scape. And I don't know what it is about a Morphe palette, but I'm just like, oh, look at all the colors. Yay, fun, I wanna buy it because it has so many colors and I'm gonna use them all and I never use them all. And I have a lot of Morphe palettes exactly like this that I love. But something about this row right here, spoke to me. I was like, yes, I need this. And didn't really think that through. Uh, a pastel really doesn't do well on me. I don't love pastels on me. I tend to look like a lab rat usually. It's just not my jam. Um, but the colors are great. The pigments are great. It's fine. It's just pastel for me. It's probably a personal preference more than anything. Um, I just love these shade ranges. So I try to play around with it. But so far, I'm just still testing this out. I'm in a testing phase with it. I'm going to try and use them wet next or mix them with a little bit of Inglot, see if I can make them a little more opaque for the pastel shades. So again, I will keep you posted on this. But what I am also wearing with it is this. So I actually have uh, asked you guys on my Instagram when I did a little poll over there whether or not you guys want to see a little more of Vive. I do have a couple Vive products and I really like them, but I've never used the shadow. And this is the Muse palette from Vive. These shades. I mean, it is like, this is my perfect palette of shades. This is probably what I reach for in terms of shades all the time. Love, 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 love. Good, nice mauve color just really looks good on me. So I have been loving this palette. I do have to reach for another palette that has like a little bit of a darker shade than this to try and build the edges if I want a little bit more of a shadowy effect. Great palette in even these little shiny bits are just wonderful. It's a great, great palette. So far, I'm really happy with it and I love the color story. Everything Vive puts out to me is just top notch, great quality. I've never been disappointed with the stuff. Yeah, it's made me wanna go buy the other one because she has other palettes, so really like this. And I'm also wearing this. I see them all the time when I walk into Ulta and then I finally just caved and bought it. This is Ray-Ban's Iphoria mini eyeshadow palettes. There's so many different like colors. The one that I got here is called Date Night and don't be fooled, this looks really basic upon first glance but I cannot stop wearing this and now I need all of them. I need all of them. So they're super, super, super creamy. So you just have to know that going into it. This is the more pale shade, which I've been using on the inner corner of my eye. I mean, look at that, stunna. And then this is the dark brown shade on the top, which will not come across like that. And it is the perfect topper ever. I don't think the camera can do it justice, but there is these little micro glitter effects like this. And I've been using this as a topper on top of every single eyeshadow look I do. So for instance, you can't really tell, but it's just like the lightest little bit of like micro glitter. And it does not leave a whole lot of pigment. So if I want the micro glitter, but I don't want all that brown, it doesn't really come across like that unless you're really digging in deep or layering it up. So I can just sort of tap this in and give myself a nice little bit of micro glitter to like spice up the look. And I love it. Super good quality, very creamy. Absolutely love these, I need more. And I finally bit the bullet and got a Rowan palette. I see these all the time online, in ads, on Instagram, all kinds of stuff like that. And they just look so beautiful. The packaging is so very like elevated and just streamlined and I don't know, luxe feeling I guess. So it isn't cheap either, so maybe you are paying for that. But I have this palette, this is called Eyes On Me. This one right here is actually a powder. This is sort of a foil. And both of these on top here are like a shimmer, but a cream shimmer. I actually have used this as like a full on eye look before. You can see there. It's super great quality. 
Um, you just have to be somebody who's really aware of how to mix powders with creams if you're gonna use all the shades. You know, just do the powder and then this little like sparkle situation. I like the color story of this just because for my eye color, these terracotta type shades really make my eyes pop a little bit more. So, so far I've been really enjoying this. I don't really enjoy the price of it, but I actually enjoy these and I think they are very good quality and I kind of want to venture out into the rest of the brand and see what else is out there with it. Now I mentioned this in my last video, but I uh, picked up the Ole Henriksen Dutopia Flash Facial, which I love a flash facial. If you haven't watched my skincare video that I just did, this is the product. You leave it on for just like a little bit. It's kind of like this gooey texture in a nice thin layer and then voila when you wipe it off your skin is like a new baby's bottom smooth ready for makeup application it just sort of gets rid of all that extra like dead skin sort of resurfaces and retexturizes it and that's what i love about an aha bha sort of situation and this is it for me i love it so much so far i have been enjoying the junk out of it and i highly highly recommend this i also went in with a little bit of clarins lately i'm a clarins junkie i can't get enough of their stuff so i feel like what what's not to love about any of the products well this one maybe i might have had to pump the brakes okay this is clarins instant smoothing perfecting touch which is supposedly supposed to like fill in lines and wrinkles essentially a primer if you will um, and this is supposed to be like smoothing and then I saw it and I was like yeah this looks exactly like what I would expect it to look like kind of like one of those pore smoothing primers but this one is a little bit more whipped softer in texture and when you put it across your hand it seems like this is gonna work great and I love it and a lot of the reviews say it's gonna work great but again I feel like I have problems with everything everyone likes and vice versa. So I don't think I really love this yet. I'm gonna keep going with it. I might have, may have applied it a little too much the first time around. So I've still been kind of working and playing with it just on days where I'm not going in front of people all the time and I just wanna give it a good test. It tends to melt off or bring my makeup melting off with it, which is like not the business and weird because I have such dry skin. So I'm still trying to play around with it a little bit more and see in what capacity I could use it because I love Clarence and I think they make amazing products and so many people really like it and I have a ton of lines so I gotta make this work because I know it can. I got another primer that I wanted to try out. Uh, way back in the day, I used to really love this Ren face wash and then this melt off um, balm for your makeup. So I thought, okay, let's try a little bit of Ren again. And I went back in with the Perfect Canvas Clean Primer. At this point, I think I'm approaching around 30 primers and I need to stop. I need to stop. It's pretty gorgeous packaging. It does look and also feel a bit like water. I have a similar primer to this that is from Lorac, and I actually really, really liked it. I don't think they make it anymore, but I love it. This is even more watery than that product, and I'm still working with this as well. It's kind of in a similar vein to the Clarins one I just mentioned, where it makes everything sort of melt off the face. It does not help with my pore area. So again, trying to work on figuring this out. I haven't tried it enough to like give it my full review. So I might put this in the updates video in a few months, but for now I'm still messing around with it. It's not my favorite primer, but we will see. Jury's still out. These aren't new, but there are a couple new updates to my collection. I mentioned this in my skincare video. This is the Ordinary's Caffeine Solution, and I needed another one because it's the best, and I was almost running out. So I got a new one of these. This stuff is the best for underneath your eye in the morning, especially if you had a long night, didn't get a lot of sleep, all that jazz. Put a little of this underneath your eye, and just like coffee is to your soul, this will be to your under eyes. I promise. And I needed a new smudge proof eyeshadow. I have been sort of playing around with different ones I had this one a long time ago this is like your eyeshadow primer um, and it's okay it's not my favorite eyeshadow primer I still love a little bit of Anastasia or just like a basic eyeshadow pot from Mac or ColourPop or something like that so I'm gonna keep using it obviously I don't discriminate too much on eyeshadow primers so I'm gonna keep playing around with this one and then I dabbled in Maybelline's lash sensational sky high so mascara has been around for a while don't get me wrong but I have an obsession for all things cobalt blue they came out with a cobalt blue mascara and of course I had to have it it is actually not my favorite cobalt blue mascara that's out there I have tried this and it kind 
kind of looks a little bit like the Benefit one and kind of actually rivals or looks like at least the Benefit Bad Gal Bang, like the actual comb here but the Bad Gal Bang is actually better. This is not as opaque as I wanted it to be, unfortunately. I really do love a good cobalt blue mascara, so I think I'm gonna go back and just reach deep into my pockets and buy the YSL Lash Clash, because they make it in a nice cobalt blue that looks very opaque. Uh, I just love a cobalt blue one, and I know they had a burgundy and a pink one, so I wanted to try those as well. I just couldn't find them in store yet, so stay tuned. Maybe I'll do a little colored mascara video. Again, with the Kylie products for a little bit there, I was on this kick where I was just trying out all of the lip balms and lip butters because everyone came out with one. So of course I bought a Kylie one just to see for myself. And it looks like the same exact packaging as like the Makeup Revolution ones too. And I have not tried it yet. This is fresh, brand new, haven't even used it. I got it in a pretty neutral shade called That's Tea. Yeah, I'm pretty excited to use it. I haven't even done a little test, yeah. Well, I mean, it looks like all the other makeup balmy oil things. At this point now, I have like probably 20 of these. I don't need any more lip balmy butter click stick things for the rest of the year. And to top it all off, Got this, baby. This is Dolce & Gabbana's La Imperatrice. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but a long time ago, I used to wear this so much, and it just brings back so many good memories, which is good, because sometimes you have one that does not bring back good memories when you wear it. It's just so floral and fruity, but like fresh all at the same time. It's so unique to so many other things I smell that there's just nothing that I can compare this with. It is one of my all-time favorites. For me, this is just such a classic, happy, breath of fresh air, summer type of feeling. I love this so much. And I, I just couldn't resist it. I used some points and got myself another one because it's so, so good and just so fresh and makes me feel happy when I wear it. So if a perfume can do all that, then it's worth it. Okay, so that is all the newness that is in my collection so far for 2024. I know for a fact there's going to be more and I will for a fact be making a video on it. So stay tuned for that. I definitely have more new makeup that's just being recently launched in the year that will be coming up on my channel. But yeah, I think that's all I got for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching and sticking around and hopefully I will see you in my next video. Bye.